Cool, so now that everyone is really awake, uh, I'm going to uh, tell you about Sandbox, um, uh, about uh, what we do, and also some of the, about some of the challenges that were on the way, and about how we got to uh, what we do today. So for those who don't know Sandbox, Sandbox is a global network for young leaders under 13, and it's a pretty old idea that uh, I had with the other co-founders of Sandbox. Um, it actually dates back uh, 13 years. When I was in high school, uh, I was 16, and uh, I was president of my high school student organization. Um, and there, uh, we had Swiss-wide meetings with uh, a lot of people engaged in student politics, and I had the chance to meet two of the other Sandbox co-founders in this group, uh, Fabian and Nico. Um, and th this group was a very interesting platform because for me it was one of the first times I would go out of my hometown, out of my high school and meet really driven, really energized people uh, who wanted to do stuff and uh, who were uh, really entrepreneurial. Um, so we started working together, uh, we created a small student marketing company, uh, especially uh, Fabian and Nico in Zurich did a lot of projects together. Uh, they opened a bar and a boat on the Lake of Zurich. Uh, they, they organized the biggest student party in Switzerland. Uh, and then, when we were at college, we, we met again and we realized that a lot of the things that had happened uh, in, in the past years um, had come to life because of this network, because we met at such a young age. And we, we thought that we would probably always need a network like this in the future, but when we would grow up, when we would be 25 or 30, that we would uh, probably not uh, need a network on a Swiss level anymore, but really on a global scale. And that was the first idea for Sandbox. Uh, it was still very fuzzy at the time, uh, but uh, we had this, this bold vision that we wanted to create a network of people uh, that resembled us, uh, who were really driven, really entrepreneurial, and with whom we could work uh, sometime in the future. So that's the first concept we came up with, the, the global talent network. Uh, sounds very very corporate, um, and that's the, the first idea we, uh, we formalized. Uh, we, uh, our first idea, because we, we had no idea how to create a community, how to build something like this, uh, our idea was that we would get the support of uh, companies, uh, big corporates, and bring together 100 people from all around the world to Zurich for two days for an event, and um, we knocked on different doors, uh, especially in Switzerland. We had the chance to meet up with uh, really high people, with the, with the president of Credit Suisse, for example, one of the biggest Swiss banks. Uh, and we told all these people, all what we need is uh, $500,000, and we'll pay for all the flights for these people, and they all come to Zurich for two days. Uh, so people were very interested, but of course no one gave us money because we didn't have anything to show, and uh, I mean, it was a pretty big sum. Um, so we spent a lot of time talking about this idea and eventually nothing came out of it and we had to, to dump the concept. Uh, we had the chance at the time to meet a young person in Zurich uh, who was a, an investor in different companies and he really believed that there was potential in this idea and he said I'm going to give you 100,000, not 500,000, but 100,000 to start the community recruit the first members and build something up and uh, we'll see where it is. So these 100,000 were uh, roughly enough for us to get started and to start recruiting the first members, organizing events and uh, most importantly having the resources to have a team uh, of two full-time people fully dedicated to building up the network, the platforms, uh, the event format. Um, and then over the, 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 the next year we spent time uh, recruiting members at all corners of the, of the planet. Uh, so we had the chance to be a team that very quickly was split in, in different locations. I stayed in Switzerland together with another co-founder. We had someone in London, we had someone in New York, and uh, we had someone that moved to Singapore. And that, these were the four bases where uh, we started the network. And we recruited people like uh, Sebastian, um, but I give you a couple of profiles of members so that you, you get a better idea of, uh, of what sandboxes are and what it means to, uh, to, to be a sandboxer. So Seb Lindstrom is originally from Sweden. He uh, has a very special background. He, uh, when he was 18, he got engaged in the Swedish Armed Forces in uh, a unit that was called the Arctic Rangers, so it's the Special Forces of Sweden. 
Um, then at uh, 20, he moved to, to the US where he had the opportunity to work as an assistant to the chairman of a quite big organization active in the US and in China, and he was traveling back and forth. And then he decided to go to college. Uh, he went to Seoul and to, he got a degree from Hong Kong University. And now he created this NGO, which is called uh, What Took You So Long? Uh, that's uh, a sort of guerrilla filmmaking organization focused on bringing awareness about uh, NGOs uh, in developing countries in the Western world. Um, his very different profile, Tia Kensara, she's, uh, she's an architect, she's based in London where she's finishing to write her PhD uh, and she's one of the masterminds between this, uh, behind this uh, Mazdar city in Abu Dhabi, um, uh, which is this fully renewable and autonomous uh, city. Uh, here's a new member, Pablo Albrecht. Uh, he's um, a very young member, he's only 19. He studied programming when he was 12. Uh, and at 14, he had program uh, a site that was called torrentfactory.org, which became the third biggest torrent website in the world, uh, which he ran for a couple of months. Um, he got so many from advertising, but then uh, when he got too many phone calls at home from US authorities, specialized in copyrights, asking what he was doing, then he got a bit scared and he, he, he stopped the project. But now he, he's very strong in algorithms and uh, he just studied his uh, yeah, investment fund based in Switzerland. And uh, another member um, uh, to, to finish this list of profiles, Patrick Leta, he's an uh, entrepreneur and he's the, the owner and president of uh, a small world, a social network. So, as you can see, these are very different people, very different profiles. And what we do is that we bring these people together. Um, online but most importantly offline in events like this in, in about 25 cities in the world currently um, we have uh, local events in one city we have regional and, and global events like we had in Lisbon at uh, Wood last year um, and uh, we have also a couple of other event formats like uh, what you can see here is a, is a senior lunch in London with Andrew Rashbas who is the CEO of The Economist in most of our hubs, we try to leverage not only the, the, the members' network, but also uh, the, senior, the, the, the senior people network that gravitates around the hub uh, to create value for our members and give them access to people that they wouldn't have access to otherwise. Um, I think one very important thing to understand about this community, because I explained very roughly what we do, um, but I'd like to explain a bit on why it's really useful as an entrepreneur to be part of a network like this and what the real value is for uh, entrepreneurs. Um, I think one of the key words is trust. Uh, that's the main value that we bring to our members. Uh, we bring them access to a really trusted network of peers, uh, people who went through similar experiences, uh, potential people to work with, and Trust comes from the fact that we have a pretty strong selection process at Sandbox, so everyone knows that when you meet another member uh, and he's been selected in Sandbox, then he is kind of the same caliber, or he has some achievements that have been measured in some way, and you can really trust him uh, because he shares uh, your experience and some of your values. Uh, and when you have a network that's based on trust, then you can achieve a lot of things. Uh, because when you trust someone, like fully trust someone, you're ready to open up your network of, 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 of contacts to him in a way that you wouldn't to anyone else. Um, like you wouldn't give your best contacts to someone who would approach you that you meet for the first time usually. But in a network like this, if this trust exists between members, then uh, you can really help with all the resources that uh, you have at disposal. I'm going to give you one, uh, one story to finish. Uh, to explain you how this network works and how this trust uh, helps the, the members achieve their goals. So I don't know if you remember the uh, Icelandic, uh, the Icelandic ash cloud uh, uh, in 2010. So uh, we had a member from San Francisco, Nathaniel Whitmore. He was stuck in London and uh, he didn't know when his flight would start to go back to the, to the west coast. And he had this idea, he said, if I stuck in London, there are probably dozens of other really cool people stuck in London, and we should do something to bring them all together. 
And it was Monday afternoon, and he said, tomorrow evening, I'm going to organize TEDx Volcano. Uh, it's going to be a conference that will bring together all the most amazing people that are stuck in London. Uh, and he managed to organize the, the quickest TEDx in TEDx history, because in 24 hours, he got a TEDx license, he got a location at the Hub London, uh, he organized catering, live and sound, uh, live stream, he put up a website, he had 15 amazing speakers, he had 150 people coming uh, and 200 people on waiting list. Uh, and uh, I think the, the live stream was watched by over 3,000 people uh, during the event, so it was really amazing. And he never planned to organize an event in London before, he never planned to organize even TEDx before. Uh, but what happened was that through networks like Sandbox, he was able to leverage the second degree contacts of many people and he put out a request in our group at Sandbox. He said, look guys, uh, in 24 hours I'm going to organize an event in London, uh, can you help me? And, uh, and uh, members were excited, they uh, started helping him, they gave him contacts to live location. someone who had attended his tech before uh, said that he would uh, help him get the license, uh, people helped him get contacts to stranded people in London to get them as speakers, uh, and that's um, what, uh, uh, and that, that's how he managed to, to do something that could take a team a couple of weeks uh, otherwise for the normal FedEx. Um, so yeah, I think <coughs> by, um, by, yeah, by, by really uniting the, the, these people and having this trust thing, then uh, that's a very useful tool for entrepreneurs to get access to all the resources they need for the projects. So that's for the... <laughs>
Uh, and then we had the chance to receive an investment, so we created the company. But uh, it's been the, 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 the long quest for the last couple of years to find the right, the, the, the right business model. So far, we, we finance Sandbox with uh, consulting services. We've been working with quite uh, big companies, helping them innovate by bringing together a couple of young people to give them feedback on the strategies or to give them new ideas. Um, and now we're testing a model that's based on membership fees, um, but uh, it's still a work in progress. Okay, thank you. We have uh, 800 members right now. Worldwide.
But uh, yeah, actually, what does happen when you're over 30? <laughs> so we try to solve that problem now by because if, if we selected men as well, then uh, they are amazing before their 30, and they should be even more amazing after their 30. So we should make sure to not keep them out, but keep keep them close with the uh, alumni community for all the members, where they can still join a couple of events, but they don't have the obligation to remain active all the time.